वेलकम टू खेल नाउस इंडियन सुपर लीग 2021-2022 टैक्टिकल प्रोफाइल सीरीज टुडे वे वर टेक अ लुक एट हाउ नॉर्थ ईस्ट यूनाइटेड कुड पॉसिबली सेटअप अंडर देयर हेड कोच खाली जमील फर्स्ट एवर इंडियन टू बी द हेड कोच ऑफ द इंडियन सुपर लीग क्लब टॉकिंग अबाउट द पास थ्री ऑफ द नॉर्थ ईस्ट यूनाइटेड दिस इज द नॉर्थ ईस्ट यूनाइटेड एट सीजन इन द इंडियन सुपर लीग इन लास्ट एट ईयर they have made to the playoff just twice including last last season uh, under gerard anderson and then khalid jamil in later part of the season the highlanders will be looking to re- replicate the heroics from last season under the isl first ever indian manager khalid jamil khalid jamil takes over the permanent head coach post from this season after leading north east to the playoffs last season jamil knows in and out of the isl and indian football better than any foreign coach in the indian super league he will have a key role to play getting best out of the indian boys this season talking about his playing style khalid prefers offensive football while giving equal importance to the defensive side of the game last season he usually preferred 4-3-3 or 4-2-3-1 formation after he took over from gerard ness and both the formation proved successful for the north east united as his team got 22 points in just 9 league games before moving at let's have a quick look into the north east united full squad squad for the upcoming season i think if you look over all the squad they have uh, apuya has left them you know went on to uh, mega move uh, to mumbai city fc and uh, overall of course they signed some key players some got santana from mumbai city fc you know to play the defensive midfield and Uh, center back role uh, retain somebody like uh, gallego and kamara i think two important player in that midfield to form that's fine up front they have also retained uh, deshan brown i think he scored lots of goals for them and you know alongside getting two new foreigners mathis korea good striker overall we we'll talk about him in the later part and also have signed uh, another center back asian asian player of them patrick flotman young player but uh, his cv is not as strong as other asian players in the indian super league but i think he will provide uh, lots of quality alongside he has got some uh, important indian players to join him and i think uh, this squad look first 11 look good on paper for sure uh, but i think overall depth uh, the replacement on the bench for the key positions for the key players it's not there i think even the attack look very good because they have two foreign center forward then of course they have somebody like you know uh, rochel jera vp soher and you know uh, the youngsters like uh, william lalan fulia ghani nigam they have signed so overall attack look good i think not replacing apuya like to like but uh, they have imran Khan and the team who has played for them and of course in I League in a similar kind of role. So I think Khalid need to make sure that he manages resources very well, and that's what is Khalid's forte. Is uh, if you remember, I'm not sure how many of you remember his Mumbai FC days. Mumbai FC didn't used to have a big budget in I League, but he made sure that his team is competitive enough. He never take those uh, I never diet attitude. His team. a uh, fought till the last minute and eventually went on to get success with you know isol fc and then uh, mohan bagan and also coach east bengal and now he is the first ever indian uh, to coach in indian super league a former indian international played for indian team so i think it's good great happy moment for indian football fans especially coach overall ecosystem because we need more and more coaches and khalid jamil will be the role model for the upcoming coaches in india let's talk about some key addition which they have done in the squad uh, not they have not overall this squad but they have signed some important players first in the list is the former mumbai city fc defensive midfield and center back hanan santana this will santana second stint in india after after winning a domestic double with mumbai city fc santana brings the winning mentality and spanish culture to the highlander dressing room he will have a responsibility to fill in the void left by somebody like benjamin lefort in the as a center back position and the leadership role also in this squad i personally feel that he will be first choice center back alongside patrick flotman who might play a a a, a dipty role to him you know because i am not seeing them playing with two foreign center back so either we'll see santana playing as a center back or patrick is playing as a center back there are chances that they can use santana in the number 6 position but then you have kamara and you want to make sure that you know you kamara is good good player and it shown is in the previous season that i think they will likely to use both of them one in defensive midfield one in center back position let's have a quick look uh, into the santana's numbers since 
uh, I have also changed the format of the these stats. I am going to talk about per 90 minute a lot because some players who plays uh, say 10 minutes in the game and when we talk about total number of games, it doesn't give them a uh, good picture to the viewers and some fans reach out to me to get, need more explanation of these stats. So what I have done is that I have uh, selected some stats per 90 minutes which you can see on the screen and I will also tell you which stat is per 90 minutes. Since 2018, Santana has played 40 games, number of games is less but I think he played majority of the season in Mumbai City FC. There is no injury concern as such. Scored three goals, provided one assist. Per 90 minutes, he has done 46 passes, 89% passing successful uh, rate. Per 90 minutes, he has made 4.3 tackles, 58%. And per 90 minutes, we have 4.9 4 interception. This is very good numbers uh, uh, for, a, for a center back or defense midfield. I think and, uh, Khalid will hope that he will provide that kind of an edge in that center back position who can keep the ball and also defend well because you can see four tackles in each game out of which 58% success. I think it's not a bad number, you know. It's not a very high, but it's a very good number for a center back in Indian Super League. Second player in the list is Matthias Correa and he brings bags of full experience in the different different leagues in in Europe and in Asia also. He's a pacey forward who can play anywhere up front, you know, in the forward line, but likes to play the center forward role. And Courier is very good in scoring headers and also very good dribble of the ball. So which 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 gives a Kali the option to use him on the wings also. Last season he scored 15 goals till December of uh, last season. And uh, let's look into detail of his numbers. And I think he's one of my favorite New signing in for for Northeast United. Considering I think I think he will have a huge role to play for Northeast United alongside Brown to score those goals because they don't have many Indian goal scorer. Uh, since 2019-20 season, uh, Mathias uh, Mathias has played 44 games um, out of he scored 22 goals, three assists, uh, xJ of uh, expected goals of 19, uh, and he scored. 22, so which tell you the good finisher. Expected assist is 7, and which tell you that his teammates were not as good finisher as he was. He should have around 7 to 8 assists, but he just had 3 assists. And another important XJ uh, metric for him is net XJ, expected goals is 19, which shows that, you know, uh, he has played for sides who score lots of goals. Now, Kali Jamil teams will operate in a different way. They, they might not score many goals, but because he likes to team very solid, but I think he will have a very important role to play. Talk about some important stats per 90 minutes, starting with passes. He makes just 24 passes per 90 minutes, out of his 77% was successful. 3.7 dribble per, per 90 minutes, which is a good number. 46% successful. 2.7 shots per 90 minutes, which is basically, and which is 1.47 on target per 90 minutes. Per 90 minutes, scores 0.61 goals. So that's tell you nearly every two, two, two to three shots, he scores one goal. So Northeast United need to make sure whenever he's on the pitch, he gets lots of opportunity to shot because uh, to shoot on the goal because a very good finisher and he can score goal for them. I think it will be interesting to see how Khalid used Brown and uh, Matthias. Will he use in a tandem? He likes to play 4-3-3, but I think there will be some, some games where he will love to make it 4-4-2 and put Brown and Matthias together in the pitch. I think third key addition is, of course, Patrick Flockman. They have not done many signings, so I have to include them. And uh, he's a young Australian defender, played in the state league level in Australia, played in some A-League games, played in some Champions League games also. And uh, he's still young. Uh, of course, he was not a first choice for Northeast United to sign for this season. But I think, uh, considering they have Hanan Santana in the, who can play in the uh, centre-back role, Patrick might start some game, but I don't see him starting uh, straight away. Maybe because of injuries and all, he can start. If, say, somebody like uh, Santana is not fit or Kamara is not fit, then you can put Santana in midfield and uh, uh, Patrick in the centre-back position. But I'm, I'm, I think he, he might do well, just like Fox last season with them, which no one was hoping that Fox will make that, that impact that FC Goa will sign him. Uh, talk about his numbers, uh, 19 since 1920. He's not played much game, just 18 games, 2 goals, 1 assist. Per 90 minute, made 55 passes, 88% which was successful. Per 90 minute, he have made 7 defensive challenges, 77% was successful. Per 90 minute, he have also air challenges, uh, attempted 3.7 air challenges, 75% was successful. Which tell you that he's a decent defender, uh, will provide you good option at back. Still very young, still can grow and I think might surprise many fans and many experts with uh, you know, with his overall play. But it will be inter interesting to see that uh, will Khalid use to foreign centre-back looks unlikely at this stage. So let's see, I think uh, before moving ahead uh, to the tactical parts, let's talk about some key exclusion uh, in the Northeast United side, you know, and starting with straight away, I think Apuya. 
uh, their captain, one of the captain last season, uh, India International now, full international, played for India, senior team, under 23 team, impressed everybody, made that mega move to Mumbai City FC in the two crores, nearly two crore transfer fee, signed that five year contract. But I think uh, North East Northern will miss him, but they will hope that somebody like Imran Khan can stand up and you know, it's not the same player, but can stand up and fill the void left by him because they have not signed a direct replacement for him. You can say they have signed uh, Santana as a replacement, but he will likely to play as a centre back, not as a defensive midfield position. So I think they will miss Apuya for sure, but I think it, it was a good deal for both the both player and the club, all three parties involved in the in the deal. Uh, second place is, is Luis Machado. I think Luis Machado the, uh, was the top scorer last season, helped North East United to reach playoff just second time in their history. I think his overall quality was good. I when I remember doing last year uh, uh, tactical preview for Northeast United, and as I was I was trying to highlight that Machado's numbers in Portugal, he played lots of game but didn't provide much attacking return. But I told you guys that you know because the level he was playing in when he come to ISL, the level is bit down for him, and and that shown in his performance, did fantastically well. I think North United tried to retain him, but I think he was not very keen. And of course, because of the bio bubble and all, the players also not keen to return to India because they don't want to remain in bio bubble because other 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 leagues in worldwide now are uh, operating at normal level, you know. So I think he will be back in India soon. But North East United will miss somebody like Luis Machado, and they will hope that Gallego can inspire them in absence of Luis Machado. Third player in the race is Benjamin Lambot, uh, the tall centre back, one of the captain for North East United. His uh, presence, not only as a player, but he was a very leader to motivate the players to, you know, show the leadership on the pitch were very important for North East United last season, I think. And that's why they were very keen to bring somebody like Santana to in so that, you know, you, you get somebody on a similar position with similar kind of experience to motivate and to, you know, to lead this team. But I think Benjamin Lambert, I think I was impressed with him with his performance last season. And then, that's the important reason was North East United qualified for the playoff alongside some reasons like a performance Apuya, Machado, Kevin Gerardness, then Khalid taking over the team. I think Benjamin Lambert did well in uh, in that season with North East United. But let's see how they cope up with these uh, cope up without these three players. They have not signed many players, so squad look thin, but they have quality of uh, players. So let's move to the tactical part now and uh, talk about that how Khalid Jamil will set up his team. First time uh, after taking over, North is a full-time coach, you know, not as an interim basis. So I think I think he's likely to play 4-2-3-1. Let's move to the tactical board now. 4-2-3-1 is is an option for Khalid Jamil for sure, but I think his go-to formation is 4-3-3 uh, with a triangle in midfield, uh, having one number six and two number eight. As it, and there's some assumption in this playing eleven. I have selected Mohammad Sarif in this first playing 11, but you might see Justin from Gokulam Kerala who joined the uh, North East United I-League winner as a centre-back. Also, I have selected Gujinder Singh as a left-back. You can see Parvod Lakhra as a left-back, which I have seen last season, both of them sharing that position. Then uh, Ashutosh Mehta had left, so right-back position is for uh, Zori Lana. I think he has the chance to start as a right uh, right back, and then of course Santana as a centre back. Then I have Rochel Jera, VP Swear, and Deshil Brown in this first playing eleven. Considering Brown has experience of the league, I think he might start ahead of uh, Matthias. In midfield, you have Kamara as a number six, Imran Khan with the number eight kind of a role. He can score and provide assist. I will come to Imran Khan later part when I talk about uh, Indian players to watch out for, and Gallego as a advanced playmaker for them. I think this formation uh, is going to be the formation he's going to use a lot. Sometime during the game when they're chasing, he might, you know, say, uh, bring back, bring out Kamara and then, you know, put somebody like, uh, bring back somebody like um, Rochandela and put Matthias up front and bring another, somebody like Sainath Singh in midfield, you know. I think we will see him using this kind of a team and then, you know, mix it up with the option, limited options he has. And I'm talking about movement, you know, uh, defensive shape, I think you will see them dropping very deep and Kamara also dropping uh, in that defense for them. And, you know, that forming that back three or back five, whatever you can call it. And Imran Khan providing that cover for the, with his pace. Uh, covering for Kamara or Gallego, if Gallego is a friend. Then, of course, Sirochal Dila and VP Swear, they are PC players. 
dropping deep but then keeping giving them option to counter attack in this case santana has the ball and you will see santana carrying the ball he is a ball carrier he can carry the ball and he will carry ball in midfield you know, and then use somebody like kamara as a option to play the passes or galego as an option to the pass as an option and he use galego in this case and then galego is also ball carrier and you will see galego making those quick passes either to rakel jira or brown or to vp soyer you know in the meantime you will see gurjinder singh and zori lala not going up front a lot but they will be there in the attacking third but you know making sure that they are covering the spaces behind them and you know then use vp swear as an option or a challenger as an option to put the crosses in the box or to make the quick interplay to find dashin brown in the goal and you know try to score those goals you can see on your screen in the end frame you know you have santana kamara and sarif two center back one defensive player making their back three and then you have some like kushinda singh imran khan vp swear zohrala in the uh, second uh, second box and then the, uh, inside the penalty penalty box you have rochel zera nishan brown and galego so i think this kind of system they going to play 433 this is the go to formation for kalej jamil not so for the last year if you go back to his days of days days of east bengal isol fc mumbai city fc this is the formation he likes he likes to and kalej jamil was a midfielder uh, by trade and he likes to control the a uh, tempo uh, of the game as a manager also so i think i think it's going to be interesting i think this of course the instead of apuya they have imran khan uh, i think this playing level is good playing level to challenge anything and we seen last season north east united qualifying for the uh the playoff i think with this kind of squad if they keep these squad fit if they can use both the striker uh, in this formation efficiently whenever they need two striker put two striker up front you know mix it up in the game during the games but when when they start on the pitch they going to start with this formation another option for them is to uh, use 4231 you know and in that formation i have just changed the personnel also you have got justin george coming in you have got uh, lakra in as a left back kamara and sana singh two pivot to number 6 to provide that defensive cover and then give free hand to galego rochelzera and mathias courier up front i have brought in in place of brown so this is very similar kind of 4 to 3 1 which you see and then you know in in this can be 4 3 3 sometime with galego uh, dropping deep in the midfield you know and you can see again when they defend they will go deep again and then you have kamara again going to the center back position helping his center back Sena Singh covering for Kamara and Galego being that option in midfield. You will see them when these kind of formation, these kind of situation use their quick wingers like Russell Dera as an option and then Galego making that movement in midfield. You know, and then you will see uh, Lakra is a good attacking left back. Lakra is a getting at a use as an option. You know, on the overlapping run to Russell Dera and then they, they what they want is what they should do and what they want is Galego in final third. Galego should not be. challenging for balls in the in the deep in the midfield he should be he should be playing the final third as galego's number shows and uh, which we'll talk about his number in the late, just later part when we talk about the key players to watch out for so i think then galego using rachel jela and then getting into box and then you know mathias courier is a good header of the ball he can score goal from head and then you know put those crosses for him with galego supporting him i think if this formation also provide them an alternate option what i also feel for them is you know uh, if they can use some situation where they're chasing the game use uh, somebody like uh, brown and uh, mathias together remove some like uh, kamara or uh, some i think kamara will will come out and put some like you know imran khan or sena singh in midfield cover for them don't go up to, up top and then allow your two center back or two center forwards brown and mathias both are great goal scorer to make havoc in the box and try to score those goals so i think that's what khali teams need has done in past and that's what i'm hoping them to do it they're not going to leave a space behind if they have a if even they have a ball i think throughout these years we have seen khali jamil team very defensively very solid i one thing they got lots of points last season under him one thing which he not like conceding those one or two goals in between you know which uh, if you go to the results you will find out so that's what khali doesn't like so khali jamil likes his team very stable kill the game score those goals sit deep back and you know defend the lead that's what he likes to do it's not the khali jamil teams will go and score four five goals every match they can score in some occasion but i think what he likes that score couple of goals sit back defend deep kill the game uh, by any technique you know by keeping the position by wasting time and then you know make sure that they get the three points i think these two system looks like the way to for khalid jamil to go ahead now let's talk about uh, the key players to watch out for and i think it's important uh, section here uh, before we move it's i have picked Imran Khan as a key player to watch out for let's talk about Imran Khan Imran Khan was one of the stand out performer for North East United last season even Apuya and everybody made headline but i think he he was bit underrated in that season and he is a left footed 
player and can play that number 10 role and number 8 role very well and when you know Gallego was injured Imran Khan played that playmaker role very well of course the numbers was not as good as the i-league days but I personally feel he has everything in him to play the number 8 role you know in that 4-3-3 midfield where he can provide cover in defense and go to the attacking part and you know score those goals also talking about his numbers since 2019 uh 19 season uh he has played 17 games uh, scored two goals have five assists i think and uh if he play number eight role if he can do this season score two 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 one or two two goal or three to four assists i think that will be a very good return from him considering that you know uh, gallego will be the main playmaker his expected goal is 1.09 which is okay there is the uh sample size is very small here but looks like a decent finisher his expected assist is 2.8 which tell you that he has not created those uh, big big chances but he got the assist because the finisher finishes well per 90 minute he attempts 44 passes 77 percent was successful per 90 minutes he also made 3.2 dribbles 69 percent was successful dribble part is decent i think passing where you need to improve on uh, he need to make sure that passing accuracy is around 80s which will be very good for a number eight and try to make a bit more for more passes you generally have midfielders number eight position should have item 50 to 60 passes per game per 90 minutes but it's a good he's a young player it's a good numbers i think this is the season where he need to stand up you know and uh, uh and and provide that uh, uh stability in midfield provide fill the void left by apuya and shows the world that what he has got and i think imran khan has everything in him to you know play that midfield role for them second player in the list is uh we have not talked about till now is the goalkeeper shubhashi shrai chaudhary a, a veteran now experienced indian goalkeeper former indian international not played for india for a while now but i think for isl he's a very decent goalkeeper and we have seen last few season you know uh whenever he got chance he has done well and i think last season north east united was one of the one of the better performer for them of course if they reach playoff you need your goalkeeper to be on the better form that's what subhashis has done and i think uh uh in in the league indian super league since he played he has maintained very good percentage of number terms of saves and clean sheet that shows that uh that his performance has gone up you know chart is always upwards so he will hope that you know upcoming season also his performance remains very good third key player for them will be of course these will be not new foreigners because new foreigners we have already talked is Gallego. i think he is the man they need to make sure he remains fit this is his third season now he has came in isl in 18 19 then there was 19 20 okay this is a fourth season nearly i think uh, he came in 18 19 and i think he has experience in isl a lot and I think uh, last season he also played a very important role driving to the, them to the playoff places, you know. And his overall game is very good. It's not just goal and assist. But I think I hope that he remains. His fitness part is a bit question mark for me. I think can he, can, can he remain fit throughout the season? Now, hopefully they have a good preseason and he, he remains throughout the season. North East United can challenge for those top four places and his performance will be very important for for challenging for top four places since 2018-19 season in isl he has played 48 games scored nine goals provided 14 assists which is 23 goals and assists in 46 game his expected goal is just six so which tell you a good finisher and expected assist is 13 so which also tell you that his his finisher his forwards north east united always have a decent forwards you know and they will hope that brown and matthias uh, continue that trend for them chances created per 90 minute he at least create you one chance in a game per 90 minute which is a great figure i think they they will hope that he will continue to do that so that brown and matthias can finish those per 90 minute he attempt around 50 passes out of which 74 percent was successful i think he will just like imran he will hope that his passing percentage remains 80s in this season per 90 minute he attempt 3.6 dribbles 552 percent successful so imran and gallego both are good dribbler of the ball uh, one stat which is true here highlighted net expected goals is minus 2.62 so that tell you three season not just last season season four and season four north east united considered lots of goals you know they should have considered lots of goals now, at least in terms of xj not as actual goals but they will hope that this season with Kali Jibli as a coach their defense will be very solid in the upcoming season let's talk about the young players to watch out for starting the list i have selected a, a, a fresh name uh i think i'm remembering him we covering doing a scouting report on in 2020 of august I think Hari did the report on Kelno website. Uh, scouting report on him is Emmanuel Lalanchoa. I hope I pronounce his name right because 
not easy for us with a very long surname but talking about his talent uh, he was under the ranks of bengaluru fc and very highly rated uh, among the bengaluru fc youth setup before that he played for u mumbai uh, in the various uh, youth leagues i think he was very highly rated with the bengaluru fc and whatever games if he has played for bengaluru fc youth teams had done well coaches were hoping that he will break into the first team at bengaluru fc but of course the competition of places is more at bengaluru fc i think he's done well to join north east united this season i'm not saying that he's going to start lots of game for them i think but he attacking midfielder can play number 8 can play number 10 can play on the wings also he will have some kind of role to play this season and make sure that he shows his talent to the world still not a mainstream player but i i i just wanted to talk about him the kind of because of just because of the talent he have the coaches we have spoken to have rated him very highly so let's see how emmanuel do uh, for north east united in the upcoming season second player i think last year he was also on this list rotel jera uh with machado and nintoy both leaving uh, now north east united rotel jera is the kind of a number one option on the wings and he will hope to improve his last year performance in this season considering he will be the main man he had one goal one assist last season uh, but i think his overall performance was very decent his uh, season before in the uh, uh, north east united in i league he scored lots of goals he can play in the center forward position also so talking about his numbers since 1920 he has played uh, 27 games scored seven goals provided two assist net expected goal is uh, xg is 5.3 which tell you that he's a good decent finisher per 90 minute he make 28 passes attempt 28 passes and 71% was successful these are the numbers which he need to improve this season he's a young player he can still improve per 90 minute he also attempt four dribbles which is very high number uh, but he likes to dribble a lot 55% successful rate for in the in terms of dribble i think the passing part he needs to uh, he need to come improve and i think khalil jamil will not like will not like his attacking player losing ball in the final third or then getting counter attack from the opponent team so i think but he will have a important role to play third indian player in the list is justin george uh, and i was also surprised you know uh, when he he did very well with gokulam i thought other isl team will be interested in him but of course another decent choice done by player to go to north east united where he can get a playing time i think he will compete with masoor sari for the center back position and i feel that and i was told also by the people who watch him very regularly that he has everything in him to be that uh, first choice indian center back for north east united in the upcoming season he has pace he can be physical he can he is a good passer of the ball so i think justin george will play an important role and he won the uh, i league title with gokulam kerala so i think let's see how these young indian players alongside these key important players we have talked about make sure that you know north east united reach their consecutive playoff of the indian super league now what to expect from north east united i think on paper you will not say that the strongest team but i will still say they don't have a weakest team now khalid as a coach gives them an extra advantage because khalid knows indian football in and out i think they they will try to challenge for they should be trying to challenge for playoff spaces places just like last season they have did it uh only concern for me is now four foreigners are allowed do they have enough depth in this team uh which i feel like is concerning they don't have many options the right back uh, depth issue is there uh, not many they could young indian players no, but not the state of you can start in the indian super league so they are heavily dependent on their first 13 to 14 players and don't have uh, that kind of uh, options on bench like fc goa and atk mohan bagan and mumbai city fc bangalore fc and kerala blaster but uh, what they have is a fighting spirit in them these young indian players are the players who are not uh, on the very high contracts they you know like other 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 clubs they are very decent de- decent contracts and they will have that hunger in them to you know to show the world that what they can do on the pitch so i think that's give them an extra advantage not extra advantage but kind of a mm-hmm. advantage because their indian players are very hungry we have seen uh, their indian players throughout this year doing well and then signing for other indian super league on the mega contract from the nintoy apuya recent examples are there so i think that will that that will help them to push for those playoff places and with khalid jamil now is a full in charge of the club i think will give them something extra as compared to the clubs like uh, who have got the new coaches now you know odisha fc kerala blaster east bengal because these clubs who have new coaches new setup will take time to get adjust with the league whereas khalid jamil is a, is a kind of a it's not a very old but a veteran of the indian football ecosystem so i think the biggest key player or key uh, coach thing is khalid jamil with them so i think of course i am not trying to uh, overrate him but he is a indian coach and i think he has everything to be a one of the successful coach in indian super league season so let's see what uh, north east united does this season 
of course not easy to challenge for those top four places but i think with seven indian players in this in, in the playing 11 i think there are more places are open in that uh, top four race than than ever talking about the weakness i think in experienced indian contingent they have uh, depth issues in the important position you know and heavily dependent on the foreign players for the creativity because their wingers i have not scored as many goals in past so they will hope that they will at least contribute assist and goals in this season compared to past season uh there is as i said right back is a position uh where they, they're going to face difficulties and i think they will hope that they don't face injuries on important players you know somebody like santana kamara even they have at least two good center forwards so galego is very important for them uh for this season and he has an injury history in past so they need to make sure they they use galego in a way that he doesn't overplay sometime so that's what khalid jamil need to use maybe change galego for a center forward for a center forward and put them both together and play the 442 in midfield you know uh, i think that can be another option tactically for him during the game to switch it but i don't think him starting 442 in the games i think he's going to mostly start 433 or 4231 uh, and during the game he can of course switch to make it 442 or any other formation So that's it for North East United. Uh, the North East United fans were angry with me because I've not done the depth charge during the in in Indian inside football. It got postponed. So don't worry. By the time you see this video, the depth chart will be live on our channel, and this is the video I have picked before seven ISL teams. So make sure that you get it what you need early. And I think all the best to North East United for my side. You guys, let me know what you think. Uh, uh, they're they're important players for them. What will they? formation you would like them to play which i have shown you guys and what do you think where they will finish on the table and will having khalid jamil give them an extra advantage over clubs like who, over clubs who have a new coach this season thank you for watching if you have not subscribed you can subscribe this channel hit that notification bell so that you get the notification for all our new videos thank you